that so uh, that is all and in between i just uh, would like to tell you that uh, so various students who are in final year they are preparing for their campus so certain training of aptitude or some uh, maybe about uh, their technical and uh, verbal ability and as well as communication that is going on so as far as they are in final year but when you people will be in final year that time uh, it shouldn't be a very difficult or tough time for you to appear for any of the interviews or if you are just preparing for competitive exams so that time also it shouldn't be like this so that care you people have to take while you people are just studying in second year so it shouldn't be that uh, you are just uh, maybe taking it casually i don't think that you should take it casually rather you just to take a lot of efforts on these skills so important is that your oral communication and apart from that you just work on your aptitude as well okay so uh, with this intimation i would like to start so uh, i will just share the screen and you people just let me know if my voice is clear to you and at the same time if uh, maybe screen is also visible yes sir okay fine just wait one minute Okay, so uh, today we are going to talk about this that uh, phrases that we people can use to talk about maybe uh, rain. So usually uh, in previous slides we people have talked about um, hot weather or cold weather. So how we people can use certain phrases. So based on that, uh, I have told you people to go and find more words or find more phrases that will be helpful for you. So that if you extend your vocabulary, then it will be very convenient for you to speak English. So every time I just tell that one of the problems that we face while speaking English is that we fail short of words. So right now, uh, I may be not able to find proper word to speak and uh, therefore I just uh, I just stop communicating in English. So on the other hand, if uh, suppose that I have plenty of words or plenty of vocabulary, if I know, then uh, the situation will be different. That I may be using if I'm not able to use this word, I will use that word instead of that because I know some uh, similar meaning words. I know some opposite meaning words. I know some uh, other vocabulary sentence phrases or I know other ways to express a particular thing. So that time it is possible that we may be just using it alternatively. But see, if we are not having proper words or uh, plenty of collection of vocabulary, then the difficulty may arise. Then another point I always talk, it is about your active vocabulary and passive vocabulary. So I know that you people know so many words you might be just, uh, you just try to think that from your uh, maybe first standard to up to here, how many words you people might have studied and you might be knowing. But right now you can't use them in your oral communication. Why? Because you're not habituated for that or you're not practicing that. So therefore knowing, in spite of knowing so many words, you're not able to speak English. And that's why I just tell every day, you people have to speak English at least for 15 minutes. And that is what I just uh, wanted to tell you for each day. In each class, I just realized this. So today again, I'm going to ask you two people that last time, uh, Mohini, you said you were not prepared. I hope that in today's class, you might have prepared and Rishikesh, role number 31, you are also prepared and well, fine. Your health is well, I suppose so. 
so today i will reserve 5 minutes for both of you and you people have to do accordingly so uh, with that we are going to start so uh, you will see that on your screen that five phrases that we people can use to talk about rain so usually when it's uh, rain that time uh, different conditions might be of raining so we are going to see them uh, some way like this so first of all you may be just getting the word drizzling or drizzle is the new word if you don't know you people have to note it down or you people have to check it into dictionary okay so you might be just getting this word and you'll get the meaning that when we say drizzle it mean that raining lightly so when it is not that much uh, the rain you feel so that time you can say drizzling so you can say rimjim paus so for that you can use this drizzling so when you say it's drizzling it mean that it is raining lightly so you may just get this word then a uh, next word is pouring so again you know the meaning of pouring but in terms of rain you don't know perhaps so when it's pouring it mean that it is raining heavily so pour that the uh maybe water droplets they come down quickly on the earth and they fall like and within a short span of time uh, there is a lot of water which is accumulated on the surface so that time you may be just saying like this that it's pouring okay so pouring is raining heavily then again here you are getting new phrase now it is not word but it is a phrase and what is it you people may be just uh, reading somewhere might be in newspaper that it's raining cats and dogs or it rained cats and dogs so what do you think might be the meaning of this cats and dogs its meaning is this raining heavily okay so this is a phrase and you people need to check it into dictionary if i am telling that the meaning of cats and dogs it means raining heavily you are getting it you are understanding it but when the lecture will get over and when you will be not in this particular condition and if it the same word came into your reading cats and dogs or it rains cats and dogs so that time you may not be able to get its meaning so therefore if you search on your own then you will just remember that when sometimes in the context of raining if it is cats and dogs it means that raining heavily okay then uh, next phrase here it is that i got caught in a downpour so downpour it means that uh, again heavy rain and sometimes it happens maybe that you are returning from college or you are just going back to home uh, maybe from your office or maybe from somewhere you are just returning to your home so that time what happens that it started raining and that raining was heavy raining so that time you are not able to move towards your home so for that you may just say i got caught in a downpour so it mean that you caught into rain and you are not able to move you take somewhere shelter maybe uh, at a particular place and there you just stood for some time so that uh, rain will uh, disappear vanish away and then you will just uh, go towards your office or towards your home so in that case you may be just saying that i got caught in a downpour uh then uh, next one is this and last one from this slide is that i think the rain is letting up again here you just note this that what does it mean letting up so after waiting somewhere or after getting caught into this heavy rain so after some time what happens normally that rain is going to stop or it becomes lighter so letting up it means that it is getting lighter and stopping okay so that time you pay uh, you people can use this phrase that i think the rain is letting up and letting up it means that now it is going to become light and afterwards it may stop so that time you people can use this phrase okay then uh, let's go to the next slide where you may just getting the uh, title as Ten ways to say you are tired. So, uh, do you feel tired sometimes? 
or always or every day perhaps maybe so as a human being we feel tired so maybe if you are just working for entire day so in the evening you might feel tired maybe if you are attending or uh, your online classes after that also in the evening you might feel tired so whenever you are just tired how you can just convey so one we one way that we know it is that i am tired so that is simple way but here you will get another different ways 10 ways that you people can use to say to convey that you are tired okay so let's start now so first of all you may be just okay just one minute okay so uh, here is the your first way that you may be saying or you may be using it and that is i am exhausted so when you say i am exhausted so meaning of exhausted it mean that the uh, enthusiasm or energy that you lack here and because of that you are tired maybe you have done some work and work may be physical or mental any kind of work makes you Uh, tired it is not always if you are doing physical work and that only makes you tired no if you are doing some mental work also after that also you may feel tired so you may just say i am exhausted so i am exhausted because of i have to complete that work on time so because of that you may be just saying like this and then uh, next one similar to that you can say i am dead tired so already i talked about i am tired so that is what we people can use or we have read or listened it but when you say i am dead tired so what does it mean dead tired so you are too much tired very much tired so that meaning to convey very much you can use here the word dead and you can say i am dead tired okay then uh, next one is that i am poofed so again this is new word for we people so if it is new i always say that better you take a pen and paper with you note it down and try to find out whether this word is used as a noun or as a verb or how we can use it or what are other meanings of this word etc you try to find out you have to be curious so then only you people will just search it otherwise if just listening it it is just watching this slide or watching the screen or listening to me that is not sufficient okay then uh, let's one is that i am spent so meaning of poop i just would like to tell that it is again similar to tired you are saying that you are tired so next one is that uh, way that you can use it is i am spent so we know the meaning of spend s yes, p e n d spend it means that we spend something we spend time we spend money or we spend other things like this but when you are just talking about the uh, uh, this uh, tired so that time how you can use this i am spent here it means that you have spent your energy and that's why you can say you're tired so i am spent it means that your energy has spent and that's why you're feeling tired so similar to i am tired meaning of this will be you are tired if you are saying i am spent it will be same as tired and then uh, next one is that beat and when you say i am beat see remember beat has a different meaning so perhaps you know another one beat means to hit someone okay but here beat it means that you're tired i'm beat it means you're tired then uh next one is that i'm running on fumes so what do you mean by running on fumes or i'm running on empty so here 
you are just again drained of energy so you don't have the energy to work now and that's why you can say i'm running on empty or i'm running on fumes and it conveys it indicates it tells that you are tired so you can use this i'm running on fumes i'm running on empty so these words phrases you have to make familiar by listening by reading by using them into oral communication you people have to just practice them then uh, next one is your i can hardly keep my eyes open so that is also very uh, familiar experience for all of us so uh, when you are just doing a lot of work for the day and uh, in the evening because of that work you are just tired a lot of tired and so actually you wanted to stay awake but your eyes are not allowing you to keep your eyes open so again that indicates you're tired and so you can say it to your friends or maybe your family members i can hardly keep my eyes open it means that right now you're tired and you need a rest you need sleep and that's why i i can hardly keep my eyes open this phrase you can use then uh, next one is then i'm off to bed okay so when you say i'm off to bed so what does it mean i'm off to bed it indicates that you are just going to bed and take your sleep so that's all so now you don't want anything so maybe any work or anything or any person you don't want to talk to anyone is there anything rutuja you want to say anything okay so you can just say i'm off to bed it mean that you are going to take your sleep because of your tired and uh, next one is that again a new phrase here probably you just noted down i'm going to hit the sack so this is a phrase hit the sack and hit the sack it means that go to bed go to sleep so i'm going it mean that i'm going to sleep i'm going to bed so this is a phrase and here again the last one from this slide it is that it's bed time for me so when you say bed time for me it means that you are going to sleep it is a uh, time that you go to bed it is time you go to sleep and uh, so uh, might be you have done the entire work of the day and you are feeling it a uh, little bit sleepy or tired and so you are going to sleep so these were the different ways i just told that we know only that we can say i'm tired but you can say you're exhausted dead tired pooped spent beat running on fumes running on empty hardly keep my eyes open off to bed hit the sack bed time so these are the different words you people have to use whenever you feel tired okay then uh, let's go to the next slide where you people may be just uh, getting the title here that phrases for promises and resolutions okay so promises that we know sometimes we promise our friends that i will do this or i will not do this and again it is mostly in case of secret we promise our friends that i will not break the secret or something like this but so what do you mean by resolutions so the word resolution it indicates that uh, some determination or some uh, maybe your strong will that you are going to follow that is called resolutions so usually on the occasion of new year people make different resolutions like this that i will wake up at early in the morning i will do exercise early or some like this or i'll study regularly i'll read newspaper or i will just do something like this so such kinds of thoughts are called resolutions nishchay you may just say okay 
so your promises and resolutions that are the some things that we usually with our friends we uh, just do or we promise or we make resolutions so let's see what are the other words what are the uh, different words that you can give promise or you can just make a resolution so here first one is that i really should and then there is dot 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 so you can begin like this so here you are going to make your resolution here by saying i really should study hard okay so this is maybe your resolution or maybe you are going to make it a promise to yourself here when you say i really should okay so you can just replace this i really should instead of just study hard i really should do exercise i really should help others i really should do something so there can be number of situations number of examples that you can put after should and that's why you just try to make your own example by just putting your own words you can begin like this i really should and then you can just put your own examples then next how you can make a promise okay so here you can begin your sentence like this i promise that i will okay and again there is dot 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 so when you say i promise that i will then you say i promise that i will complete my homework on time i promise that i will use my uh, mobile uh, hardly or i promise that i will uh, keep my room clean and neat i promise that i will do this or i promise that i will always speak truth okay so there could be number of such situations that you may add here and similarly i would like to tell you instead of just using it positively you can just use negatively also instead of just saying i will so people can say i will not also i won't also so i promise that i won't lie i won't lie means i will not speak lie we can say i promise that i will not waste my time or i will not waste food i will not do this i will not do that so there could be number of other things that you can just add here after that and i can say i promise that i promise that i will always help you i promise that i will always accompany you so there could be number of many more situations then uh, next one is that you can say i swear so do you know what do you, what does it mean i swear man swear so what is the meaning of swear you just tell me you can tell me orally you can tell me it in chat box also you might have heard it you might have used it i swear so what does it mean strong uh swear it means that to take a uh, an oath shapath gene so like this i swear i will or i won't again you can use it in positive way also or in a negative way also hmm? so you might have used it with your friends while talking hmm? so maybe uh, if somebody uh, doesn't believe you and you're trying to convey so that time you may be just going to say that i swear hmm? i will hmm? i swear i will come with you i swear i will not deceive you i will not uh, maybe dwindle you i may not cheat you so this could be some examples that you may just use after i swear okay so this is a very strong promise so it is maybe when you say i swear so instead of just saying i promise so strong promise will be when you say i swear okay then uh, next one is that you can also assure your friends by saying like this no matter what happens 
I'm going to. So this is a phrase again, no matter what happens. So it means whatever happens, maybe here is something, there is something, or maybe people oppose you, people support you, maybe people uh, criticize you, or people ridicule you, or whatever it, so whatever happens, so I'm going to. So here you are determined, you have decided your strong will. So I'm going to complete my graduation. No matter what happens, I'm going to complete my graduation. I'm going to pass IAS exam, IPS exam, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to come with you. I'm going to support you. No matter what happens, I'm going to support you. So you people can just use these phrases. Then let's go to the next one here. Similar to that, here you may be getting another phrase and that is come hell or high. What do you do? So people note it down. Come hell or high water. And what do you think the meaning of this phrase come hell or high water? It also means the same no matter what happens, whatever happens. So for that, your people can use this phrase, come hell or high water, I will. And then you just say, I will come with you, I will help you, I will just support you. Whatever you are going to say, that can be just said after this, I will. Or similarly, you can say, I won't also. So you can use sentence in negative way also. Okay. So you can see here the note is that point number four and point number five. So express your determination and uh, you're going to do something even if obstacles appear. Okay, so that's why I just mentioned. So no matter what happens or come hell or high water. So these are the phrases they indicate that whatever happened. So any obstacle may come any difficulty may come, any struggle that you have to do, but anyway, you are going to complete it. Anyway, you are going to do it. So for that, you just remember about point number four and point number five, they are strong determinations. Okay. Then uh, let's go to the next slide, which is Maybe usually you people might be late at some places when it was college days that time, perhaps you might be reaching late to college or reaching late to class. Or sometimes it may happen when you will join office. So that time also, uh, because of some reasons, you might be reaching late to your office also. So here you people are going to just get some words or phrases that will be considered as excuses for being let. So normally what could be the excuses for being let? So you may just say, uh, maybe you can say, uh, tire punctured, bus late, bus fell, or you can say maybe uh, there could be number of reasons. So, but here you just will get some of these 10 excuses. You have to find out many more. I'm sure that you'll uh, take it out more excuses apart from this 10 only. So first of all, you can just say, sorry, I'm late. And that is usual and normal, commonly used by most of the people. So there is no need to discuss it more. Uh, next one is that I overslept. Does it happen with you? You sometimes you overslept and because of that, you got late to college. Most of the times it happens with uh, many of the people. So uh, when you are going to come to the college at 8 a.m. in the morning, and so usually you wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and you get ready up to 8 o'clock and reach on time to the college. But uh, the day before, you might have done some work or late night, you might have studied, and because of that, instead of just getting up at 7 o'clock, you might have slept up to 7.30 a.m. And then you woke up and then you just took uh, much time for getting ready and you got late to college. 
so that time it is possibility that you may say i overslept i slept longer than i should have or another reason will be like this my alarm didn't go off so what do you mean by here go off when you set an alarm so it rings at the particular time that you set but because of some fault sometimes it does not ring so imagine that you set an alarm at 6 am in the morning that you want to wake up but see instead of that 6 am your alarm did not ring at all maybe in uh, while setting your alarm you might have done something wrong or maybe any technical issue or any other issue but your alarm did not ring at 6 am so what will happen you'll just be relaxed that you're sure your alarm is going to ring you and you are going to wake up but your alarm did not ring so possibly that instead of getting up at 6 you might uh, wake up at 7 also so and because of that you may get late then a uh, next one is that i had to wait ages for a bus okay so we know that waiting for bus but what do you mean by ages for bus when you say i had to wait ages for bus it mean that a very long time you have to wait so usually when you'll just use public transport so that time you may experience this you may be traveling with your bus and uh, your bus may not be just on time so there you have to wait maybe about train maybe about sometimes flight okay so in case of train and flight that much delay is not there but in case of bus perhaps you have to wait more okay or simply you may just give excuse like this the bus was late okay so that was all thing that i should discuss now a remaining point will discuss it later so what about uh, i would like to ask mohini are you prepared today roll number 1 mohini why no okay so rishikesh 31 i don't see he is in the meeting he is not there okay fine so i'll just ask the roll numbers uh, maybe those okay we'll take attendance and they'll go for quiz so those who are connected rushikesh roll number 16 you just say yes or no present something like this 16 33 one yes sir okay two three Yes, sir. Okay, six. Seven. Yes, sir. Eight. Present. Nine. Present. Twelve. Fifteen. Twenty-four. Present. Twenty-six. Yes, sir. Twenty-seven. Yes, sir. Thirty. Yes, sir. Forty. 